Hi everyone, my name is Hernan. Thank you for joining me one more time in this channel where we see how to solve problems using Unity. The idea for this video is to show you how you can iterate through the children of a certain game object in Unity. And for that, we're going to use this scene that I've already prepared. Um, this scene belongs to a Unity project that you can clone from my GitHub account. But we can see that at the end of this video. For now, let me tell you a bit how this scene is composed. Uh, we have this empty game object, which contains several um, children, just standard cubes, all placed at the same position. And the idea is to iterate through all these children. On the other hand, we have this other empty game object, which has a script assigned, a script that I've already created. And I also define a function inside this script, which is called when I press this button from the, from the user interface. If I display here the console, when I press this button, you can see a message appears in the console, button was pressed. That means um, that's because this uh, button click function is connected to that button. So when we press the button, this function is called. So we can um, solve the problem here in this uh, code part. So these are the elements we are going to use. And we are going to separate this problem in two parts. Um, the first part, we want to be able to traverse this, um, all of these objects, maybe just print their names in the console and then we will do a couple of things using each of one of these objects. Maybe we can change the name of each object. Maybe we can assign a random color. Maybe we can displace them to a certain position. I don't know that that part for the second part, we will find out, I guess. To solve this problem, first of all, we need to reference this uh, the parent object from our, our script. And you can do that by defining a public uh, game object variable object let's call it my parent object um, you can you can either use a game object variable or a transform variable um, you access you basically access the children of a game object through the transform component but if you have a, the, the reference of the game object you can easily access to the transform of that game object because in unity all game objects has a transform component associated um, so let, let's define this public variable, go to Unity and let's drag the, um, the parent object to this field in the inspector. <clears throat> now here, um, when the button is pressed, we want to iterate through the, um, all the children. But let's do that uh, in a separate function. Let's define here um, void iterate through children just a name for the for function and we're going to call this function here uh, when the button is pressed so we can keep this part of the code clean so to iterate through the children and um, first of all we need to know how many children's uh, we have and we can do and we can do so using our variable uh, let's define a, an int local variable let's call it child count and make it equal to our game object a variable with the dot operator access to the transform component associated to that game object and with the dot operator again we can access to different um, properties related to children for example the child count child count so now here we can um, so here we know how many children's we have we can also let me show you real quick uh, I'm gonna define a public int here, child count. And I'm gonna make this variable public so so it appears in the inspector. I'm gonna remove this part. Uh, just to show you, just to show you this, we in, in inspector we have the child count variable. We have reference our parent game object, and this parent game object has ten children. So when I press this button, I should be able to read the the child count of this game object. As you can see, when I press the button, this variable is initialized with chain. I know, just to show you that that we um, that we are in the right path. So now we define a for loop to traverse each of the children. So for uh, int y equals to zero to y equal less than child count less than child count i plus plus. 
And to access a certain child of the object, we use the, the variable. With the dot, we access to a transform. And then to the transform, we execute the get child function, which requires an index as parameter. In this case, the, the loop index. Um, so this, this function returns the transform of the i child. So we can define here a transform local variable, transform um, specific child, for example, just the name. Uh, and we can initialize uh, that, assign the, the i child to this variable. So here we should be able to uh, display the, the name of each of the children. We can do that by uh, by using this instruction, debug.log and debug.log specific child dot name so let's save this let's go to unity hit play and press the button there it is as you can see we get the message button was pressed which is this message from here then the, um, the function is called and we iterate through all the children that's why we get um, each of the names here in the console. So we basically solved the first problem, which, which is the, the purpose of this, this video is to show you how to iterate through children. And now let's do something with this. Let's apply certain actions to any to, to each of the children. So let's make a little pause. If you are enjoying this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you. Um, what we can do, I think the first thing that we can do is to change the name of, of um, every children, every child, right? Um, so we can do that by using this, this property. Name is a get set property, so we can set any value we want. Specific child.name equals two. And we can, here we can assign a name, I don't know, child number i plus one dot to string, for example, because the, the loop index starts in zero. So the first child would be the, the, the child zero. But um, if we make i plus one, the first child would be <laughs> the number one. I don't know. Let's save this, hit play and press the button. And as you can see now, all the, our children's uh, were, were renamed. Now, we what we can do now i think we can let's assign a certain position uh, in the scene using the index uh, as parameter for example we can align all the children in a straight line uh, you know, separated um, with the distance between each other uh, we can do that by so here we have the the transform variable so we can access to its position and make it make it equal to whatever we want for example we can take you know vector three dot left left direction multiply it by i also by two because the cubes are one unit and we can also add an offset vector three dot left multiply it by ten for example I think this, I don't know, this could be done in a different way, but let's test this and see what happens. So let's hit play and press iterate. What happens? Yeah, I guess it's right. Then we can tweak the values. For example, we can um, define here public float um, initial offset equals five and public float distance between objects equals two so we can use these variables to position our, our objects so let's go to unity hit play again and and when we press the button these values from the inspector uh, are used to position the object so we can change here for example we can set minus 10 for the initial offset and then the five for the distance between objects, press iterate, and all the objects should align using these parameters. I don't know, something um, interesting that you can do. Um, what else we can do? Let's assign them, all the children, a random color. So we can use the following strategy. 
we already have the reference of every transform, every child transform. Using that reference, we can access to the mesh renderer component. When we access to the mesh renderer component, we can also access to the material of that mesh renderer. And then we can um, change the color from that material. So that's what we are going to do. Um, so let's go to the script and here. So first we need to access to the mesh render component. So specific, so specific child dot get component to transform uh, mesh renderer. We want the mesh render component uh, assigned to that specific child dot material. This is a way that which you can access to a single material assigned to the to a certain mesh renderer. If you have multiple materials, maybe you, you will need to use this other property. But for now, as, as the cubes have only uh, one material, we can use this, this property. Um, and when we have the material, because all of this instruction is a material, um, with the dot, dot operator, we can access to the color. So we can make that um, random dot color. I don't remember if this function requires parameters. Maybe not. color from I think that should work. So now let's go back to Unity, hit play, and press the button. And now um, every object has a different color. You press the button again, and the, um, the colors are regenerated. Uh, what else? can we do? Let me see. Maybe if the the object, the, the, the child index is even, we can displace the object uh, up. And if the, the child index is odd, we can displace it uh, down. So let's do that. Uh, we are here. First of all, we need to know if the index is even or odd. You can do that by then if statement if i um, percentage two equals zero i'm not sure how this operator is called um, in english um, i think it could be module but i'm not sure uh, but the idea is that um, if you have two integer numbers um, and we we take this number and divide it by two what's the rest of that division that's that's the idea of this part. And if you divided a number by, by two and you and nothing is less left over, then that number is, is even. And if the rest of this division is one, the number is odd. Uh, so that's basically the idea here. <laughs> Sorry for my explanation. Um, oh. So what we wanted to do, we want to displace um, Basically, we want to change the position, um, increment the vertical uh, position. Wait, let, let, let's start over. We have the position of our object, which already has been displaced before. And we want to modify that position, moving, moving it up if the, if the child index is even. And we want to move it down if the child index is odd. So here, we check the position and we modified it by vector three dot up direction multiply it by i don't know one for example we, we don't need to multiply by one but just doing so uh, it it will already be displaced by one unit um, so here in this other part we can subtract this or use vector three dot down Let's save the changes, go back to Unity, press the button, and some objects are up, some objects are down. So we, I think we already have several examples, I'm not sure. Maybe we can do a last um, thing, which is how we can add um, a component or a script at runtime. And for example, let's... Let's take the specific ch child, specific child, and add a component, add a rigid body, a rigid body component. If we do so, we 
the elements will fall. But maybe we can uh, get the reference of every rigid body that we are assigning and maybe modify a bit the gravity so they, they don't fall so fast. Maybe we can make some of them go up. Rigid body. So here, when we add a component, this function results in the component that we are adding so we can preserve this reference and defining a local variable, for example, rigid body, specific rigid body equals to the add component instruction. Now, if we have the reference of the rigid body, we can access to you know, gravity, for example, use gravity. Uh, through false, I think we don't have um, a multiplier. That's a shame. Uh, Richard Boy 2D has indeed a multiplier for the gravity, but I think we can use disable the use of gravity so the objects um, don't fall. And let's do the following if the object is even, we are gonna make the, the objects go down the object is odd, we will make the objects go up. Uh, for that, we will need to move this code part up to this region before we, we determine if the, if the child index is even or odd. But now here we can make the following specific rigid body. So we, want, we can define a, a linear velocity, for example equals to vector 3 dot down we, maybe we can multiply it by a, by a certain value open one multiplied by vector 2 down so so then the object won't move so fast and if the if the child index is odd we just place a, a negative sign here or maybe use the up direction here it's the same so now you save the changes hit play and press the button and as you can see the objects are moving that's amazing so that's it for this video uh, i hope you enjoyed it and you can clone this project from my github account and that way whenever i upload a new solution you will you will know it and you will be able to pull those changes to, to your project this is my github account and here you have a video on how to use GitHub Desktop to clone a, a Unity project. And this GDT solutions for Unity, this is the project you want to, to clone. You basically use this button and maybe open with the GitHub Desktop and then select a folder to download the project in your, in your computer. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, uh, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.